Huh? There's new hope tonight for Canadians suffering with intolerable pain. A bill expanding access to assisted death has received royal assent. Those who aren't near their natural death now have the right to seek medical assistance in dying. But as Heather Yerkes West reports, some groups feel the new law puts some vulnerable Canadians at risk. Janet Hopkins has been living with a serious autoimmune disease for the last 13 years. She says she lives in constant pain. Since last February, I have been thinking of suicide. I've talked to my family about it because the pain is excruciating when you get a flare up. Because her condition was not life threatening, Hopkins had not been eligible for a medically assisted death. But with the passing of Bill C-7 on Wednesday, that all changed. I started to cry because I have wanted this for so long. Under the new law, intolerably suffering Canadians who aren't near death become immediately eligible. It also removes a requirement that patients be able to give final consent at the time of their death. And that's wonderful because what's happened in the past is many people have had to opt to, to take their death early in order to avoid that situation because they were at such fear and risk of losing capacity. The government had until next week to bring the law into compliance with a 2019 Quebec Superior Court ruling that found Canada's previous law was unconstitutional. In two years, access will also expand to those suffering with severe mental illness, something opponents worry will put vulnerable Canadians at risk, particularly those from Indigenous communities where mental health supports can be difficult to access. It sends uh, a culturally and socially acceptable message that suicide is uh, one option to end one's suffering. And that is contrary to our message that we're sending to our youth. The new law requires people not facing imminent death undergo a 90-day assessment before a medically assisted death can be accessed. Heather Urex West, Global News, Calgary. Sarah Boxley does show that you have CML as a molecular study um, suggested and the main thing we wanted to know from the bone marrow is whether the CML was in chronic phase or if it had evolved to an uh, accelerated or blast phase that are more aggressive. So it does look like it's chronic phase CML and we looked as well at the chromosomes and there's no evidence of any uh, additional chromosome changes beyond the one that is um, characteristic of CML. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what that means is that, uh, you know, we, um, that's good, um, and that with chronic phase CML and proper treatment, life expectancy is that of the general population. Okay, so it's a very treatable condition. Uh, in terms of treatment, um, it would be oral pills. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are several ones available um, on the market. The oldest one um, is called Imatinib, uh, and that's the very first CML oral pill drug that was developed in the year 2000. And so we have 20 years of experience with it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very good. There are, um, and, uh, and it can lead to, you know, long, um, suppression of CML. It's also the one that we, we consider safest to use because we have so much experience with it and with its side effects. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so common side effects uh, with, any, uh, with any of these pills really, but um, with imatinib, would be things like uh, it can cause slightly low blood counts, especially initially. Um, we just have to monitor them. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. the rash. Okay, which what, what? isn't uh, um, necessarily a, um, a reason to stop their drug, but we may need to manage a rash. Okay. It causes stomach upset, like any medication can, um, but certainly um, it's, uh, it's one of the side effects. Okay, so things like it can cause belly pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. It usually gets better over time. Um, but we do say that. It can cause some um, fluid retention, the so swelling of your legs, and sometimes around the eyes, um, as well as around the lungs. So sometimes people feel short of breath. 
Uh, and the last thing to, to say is that it can also cause uh, an elevation in your liver enzymes, so some liver irritation. Okay, there's a very long list of other side effects that anyone has ever had um, that I can send you some information about this drug. But overall, it's well tolerated and it def and it's um, changed the landscape of CML completely. Uh, and is very effective at treating CML. Okay. Okay. There are other types of uh, drugs um, that are that work similarly. Um, they're maybe a little bit better at inducing a deeper and faster remission. However, over time, the the outcomes in terms of um, life expectancy, um, quality of life, um, and etc. are not. Uh, are not significantly different. There okay. is a possibility after taking these drugs for many, many years, and typically at least five years, if the CML is very well controlled and the levels of the mutations are very, very, very low, there is a possibility of what we call a treatment-free remission, or uh, what that means is of stopping the drug Mm -hmm. and, uh, and monitoring, and, and half of the people who stop the drug after having a very deep remission, after at least five years, often more, um, we may not need any more pill treatment in, ever after that. So um, the, the chance of achieving that is a little bit higher with those newer pills than with imaginative. But again, imagine if uh, those newer pills come with a slightly different side effect profile um, and, uh, and don't guarantee being able to come off the drug. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Well, so no, take uh, that medical aid in dying and all that, I don't have to worry about that. That is not an option? For this, no, no, because for this, your life expectancy is about the same as the general population. Oh, God, I gotta live. Uh, okay, uh, so, uh, okay, so, is this uh, medication covered by the ODB? Yeah. Yeah, so my, my preference in general is to start with imaginative rather than the newer drugs because it's the one with the safest side effect profile and the one that we have the most information about. Um, and in the future, if uh, you know, things change or, or if there isn't as deep a response as we want with imaginative, we can always switch. But um, I often find that it's the better tolerated of all of these um, tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Okay. Um, Which is a class of drugs that treat CML. Yeah, okay. Um, Unless you tell me you're someone who definitely wants to come off the pill as soon as possible. I really but, don't um, care if it's just a pill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but the question is what will it do for me? This is it. No, will all my pain in my body go away? Would all the nausea every single day go away? Uh, oh. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know because I don't think that all of these symptoms are related to the CML. I think there's other causes potentially. So, um, so maybe, but I can't guarantee it. And it's often hard to say what is and what isn't caused by CML. Most people who are diagnosed with CML may feel completely fine. So, it's possible that, okay, mm -hmm. so what are you saying that people with CML could be completely fine? What are you saying? So, what I'm saying is the symptoms that you have of your body pain, the diarrhea or the belly pain, um, are not necessarily explained by the CML. It's hard to say. It's hard to say for sure because sometimes it can cause belly pain if you have a very big spleen, things like that. But um, but it's not it's not typical of CML patients to have generalized body pains the way you do. 
doesn't mean it can't be, but I can't say for sure that it will get better with CML treatment if it wasn't caused by just the CML. Okay, and the and in terms of what the pill will do for you, with the pill, um, the life expectancy of patients with CML is the same as the general population, but without the pill, this is likely to progress over time and to become more aggressive and to transform into acute leukemia. Yeah, but uh, is that actually a choice? That some patients would say, I don't want any treatment. I haven't heard of anyone <laughs> tell me you don't want any treatment. But at the end of the day, it is your choice. But you have to understand that without treatment, this PML will significantly shorten your life expectancy and um, and evolve into acute leukemia. And the acute leukemia the treatment is even worse, isn't it? And the kind of acute leukemia that evolves from CML is very hard to treat and uh, and and likely will will lead to death. How long does that take? Hard to say. Everyone's different. Maybe, maybe years, maybe months, maybe decades. It's very hard to say. Oh, wow. Okay. Everyone's a little bit different. Okay, so... Very much. I just take this medication and hopefully I have a regular life expectancy. Is that, that what you're saying? But as exactly. for all the symptoms I'm having, especially all this pain, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to go away. Exactly. So I still need to see my pain doctor and other doctors to figure out why I'm in pain? So. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. It might improve, it might improve, right? I, I, I'm not going to say it won't, but I can't say for sure that it will. Okay. Uh, okay, so how am I going to get this medication then? Yeah, so, you know, before we start, I'd like to see you in clinic just to make sure that everything is okay. I want to make sure that you're recovered from the colitis. Mm -hmm. yeah.